Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on what time you're watching this. My name's Connor from 905 Review. You guys are checking out our series, Give This a Spin, where I recommend you some of my favorite albums. And boy, do I have a treat for you today, as we're checking out Acid Bath's 1994 debut, When the Kite String Pops. Acid Bath got their start playing in some of the southernmost towns of the state of Louisiana, as the Homa Thibodeau metropolitan area would be the first to experience this new bludgeoning sound. They were part of a niche and yet powerful southern Louisiana sludge metal scene that included fellow acts I Hate God and Crowbar, and Acid Bath could just as easily kill you with their frantic death metal pace. But enough hyping them up, let's get right into the music, and you will see this sludge metal prowess right from the opening moments of the first track, the blue. It kicks off with some of the slowest and most dreadful guitars while frontman Dax Riggs just roasts you. The song then picks up in pace briefly while the lyrics take a bit of a turn as well. I absolutely love Riggs' poetry, as dark as a lot of it is. So brace yourself if you haven't already, because if you didn't realize, they used a John Wayne Gacy painting as their album cover, and one of Riggs' hobbies was just de-sculling roadkill. So we're in for some messed up stuff here. As if this song wasn't good enough already, the beat switch halfway through absolutely delivers. They change this up a second time to get even faster before switching back to the original sound of the song. This is followed by the next one, Tranquilized. It starts off with a pretty grooving riff while Dax just sings about drinking, getting high, just overall getting fucked up. As the song progresses further, he emphasizes that he lives tranquilized, if you catch my drift, before the song changes into this deep, slow, heavy portion. Continuing on in a similar fashion, we get to cheap vodka. Can't really go wrong with that. Well, okay, I guess... You can, because after this awesome distorted bass intro complete with drum fills, the band proceeds to jam while Dax just screams about spending the last of his money on vodka and then going on a killing spree. As great as this speed is, I love the sound they employ when they slow things down especially with the vocals having a bluesy, almost even folk influence to them. This was the first Acid Bath song I ever heard, and I've been hooked ever since. Starting off with another flawless bass intro is Finger Paintings of the Insane, as we again find ourselves slowing things down. I never put two and two together, but users on the lyrics website Genius theorize that this song might also be in reference to the Sharon Tate murder, which is odd that I'm already referencing it a second time in however many weeks, but uh, there, there's enough there that I can kind of see the connection. Whether that's accurate or not, it at the very least seems to be about some violent, deranged lunatic who feels they deserve the world. While it's not the most complex thing they've ever done, I absolutely love the bridge on this, and furthermore the soulful and sludgy guitar solo that it prompts. As gut-wrenching as some of the lyrics may be, this is one of my absolute favorites of the bands. 
Incredible song. Opening the second side of the first record with the most frantic start thus far, we have Jezebel. It's just a messed up relationship where a guy fueled by love, drugs, and a desire to be dead tortures an adult female service worker. Detestable acts aside, they make this song kick ass. Plus the bass guitar driven bridge that prompts the song to explode, I mean, how wicked is that? This is followed by the sixth track, the more soulful and tender Scream of the Butterfly. It's about a girl who suffers through some sort of traumatic event, something so severe that Dax says that if there is a god, they'd be insane to have just allowed this to happen, and that it's so bad he harms himself just at the idea of it. It's a tragic, tragic song, but a phenomenal one at that. Things don't get any better, as on the next track, we're reminded that Dr. Seuss is dead. That's it. That's the name of the song. And Acid Bath plays at their sludgiest, most earth-shattering, in memoriam. This of course doesn't last forever as they pick up the pace for a solid groove and then even double down going faster. Another stellar track. Opening the second disc now with some more pummeling chords, we have the eighth track, Dope Fiend. The song picks up while the lyrics showcase the hardships and trauma of heavy drug addiction. The narrator realizes how poorly their life is going, even asking for death, and this is unfortunately contrasted by them getting their next hit and then, you know, finally feeling joy of life again, as if that's what it takes. This transitions right into the next song, to Babo Kumi, which is Louisiana French for Land of the White Cannibals. As Genius users pointed out, this could very well be in reference to the government or just other general positions of power, as oftentimes it's just a bunch of old white guys trampling over everyone, even themselves in office, just to climb higher up the totem pole. Here Acid Bath is completely against those in power, believing that we cannot have true freedom under these conditions, and they make their stance on the matter very well known with the shocking lyrics here. Dax's intense anarchist ideas will have Lady Liberty crawling to him, he says. Oh, and while filming the music video for this song, an alligator straight up chomped the dude's face. Amid the sounds of guitars getting ready to play and some samples, Dax begins a poem regarding the band's revolt to the omnipresent Catholicism they grew up in in the South, starting God Machine. And in their eyes, religion really has become just that, a machine. A machine on a million legs that kills individualism and believes that they're pure and righteous ways are the only way and that they will exile or go to war with anyone who opposes. And by the end of the song, Dax wonders how he could do the same. If he could dispel other religions and tell you to have faith in him, would he become your god? Now 
Now, I'm not here to vote one way nor the other on religion. I'm just here to tell you what an awesome thrashing song this is. And opening our final record side is the Mortician's Flame. They get a nice groove going to start with this deep rumbling bass line and this solid snare and bass alternation on drums. A deep cutting song to go with some more heavy topics. On the next song, and one of the bands faster at that, they ask, what color is death? Dax demonstrates his fascination with the loss of life on this one and wonders that when we're gone, if it really is just total nothingness, can it really be that bad? With this in mind, it seems like he and the girl he's with have some fun together and then peace out, if you know what I mean. Nearing album's end now, we have another ballad, The Bones of Baby Dolls. I think this acoustic tune is such a substantially beautiful one. What is it about? Honestly, I couldn't even tell you, but I would think maybe the loss of childhood and innocence. While that would have been a solid one to close out with, they reel you back in for a more typical song of theirs, Cassie Eats Cockroaches. Saving their most disturbed, and to some their absolute best, for last, it's a song about necrophilia with the added samples from the movies Clockwork Orange and Blue Velvet only adding to that unsettling feeling. And be advised, it's descriptive enough to probably make you sick. When the Kite String Pops was released on Rotten Records, a label that has become infamous to fans of the band, and is available on cassette, CD, and of course vinyl. The original 1994 releases had this different font on the album cover, so I'm glad they switched to this more hardcore look from 2004 onwards. If you're lucky enough, you can find this on clear vinyl, or red and blue, white, orange and purple, or a variety of other colors if you bought the 2022 mystery pack. The album would go on to garner a cult following as an underground metal classic. They followed this up with their second album, Pagan Terrorism Tactics, in 1996, but that would be it for the band as they officially retired following the sudden and unexpected death of bassist Audie Petrie, who was struck by a drunk driver. There are multiple other projects the surviving members of Acid Bath have created, though to me none of them can quite compare. For as twisted as When the Kite String Pops is, it actually does a great job covering a variety of topics. Religion, politicians, drug abuse, loss of childhood innocence and creativity. While it may not obviously be said, they're also advocates for freedom of speech, considering the absolute vulgarity of a lot of the lyrics and the fact that they used a serial killer's artwork on their album cover. On top of this, they're absolutely killer with both their sludge sound or their death metal sound, and I love the ever-present thick bass all throughout the album. They play so ruthlessly and yet create such awesome and memorable melodies at the same time. And so I will be stamping When the Kite String Pops with an A plus grading. I mean, there's just such a great mix of everything on here and it's all executed so perfectly. I would be hard pressed to find a metal album as consistent as this one considering it's 14 tracks long and none of them weak. In fact, most of them stellar. Those have been my thoughts on Acid Bath and When the Kite String Pops. If you're interested in learning more, find Josh the Acid Bath fan on social media. The dude is like a living, breathing museum of everything Acid Bath and Acid Bath related. And with that, I bid you adieu. Thank you for tuning in. It's been a pleasure hosting you. And I hope to see you again. But real quick before we take off, 
What did you think of when the kite string pops? Did I rate it too high? Did I rate it just right? Because that's the only other option. Um, appreciate you sticking around. Um, love having you. Till next time. I enjoyed your company.